up to answer about 200 of your questions about the big solar storm that took place. It is still ongoing now, but appears to be slightly starting to wane away. We're likely to see reverberations today, but hopefully not to the high levels we saw last night. Hopefully we also won't get any more solar wind intensifications from coronal hole streams or anything like that. One turned through the south and another is facing Earth today. You can see it here. There were no solar flares or major eruptions on the sun yesterday, but of course, the story was here at Earth, where the CME that launched directly at us on the 21st arrived several hours earlier than expected and was a fairly strong impact, although not quite strong enough that anyone would have expected KP8 level 4 geomagnetic storms. Did have a plasma filament release off the incoming limb, but the CME from that one is not aimed our way. Let's go right into diagnosis and analysis of the space weather event here at Earth the last 12 hours. As I said, the CME arrived as a truly traditional interplanetary shock wave. It was a solid impact and was preceded by a preconditioning phi angle flip in the solar wind stream. Fairly fast speed, solid density, and a turbulent magnetic wake, all made for a big hit to Earth's magnetic field that could be seen on magnetometers worldwide and on satellites. The storm had a double peak at KP8, which is a level 4 event. One as the shock wave draped over the Earth, and the other as that magnetic wake engulfed the planet. This was about 5 to 10 percent as strong as the solar kill shot would need to be, but we still saw significant impacts. The new geoelectric maps, which now include Canada, were beautiful to watch. Several areas took large but still sub-catastrophic levels of induction. And the expected technological impacts began almost immediately. As is always the case, we saw a big uptick in reports of electrical fires, from switches to transformers to airplanes to home systems. The same thing we always expect to see was exactly what we got. Luckily, it was not an even bigger storm. The technological impacts can be expected to continue for 24 to 48 hours after the storm as well, and the storms in the weather should be intensified due to global electric circuit impact to the low pressure cells. Eyes open for more. Saw a lot of you discussing this. The Blood Echo Seismic Risk Map had a red zone warning in the southwest Pacific, and they took a magnitude 7 event as the day turned over UTC. Luckily, it was out to sea, and there was no tsunami.